All right, good day, learners and colleagues. It's Technical Sciences, grade 12, and we'll be looking at organic chemistry. So it's the last part where we're gonna be looking at questions and answer session. This is an outline of what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna do an overview of what we have learned in previous session in nomenclature and we're also going to be looking about questions in nomenclature and the last part would be some examination tips. What you have learned in the previous lesson is to define the organic molecules as molecules containing carbon atoms. You also learned about how to write molecular and structural formulas of organic compound. And you also learned about homologous series, which includes alkanes, alkene, alkyne, alkyl halides, aldehydes, ketones, alcohols, and carboxylic acid. You also learned about different definitions that you need to learn by heart. And those definitions include the definition of a homologous series, a functional group, a hydrocarbon, a saturated hydrocarbon, as well as unsaturated hydrocarbon. And also what you have learned are the names of the homologous series, such as alkane, alkene, alkyne, haloalkanes, and alcohols. Those are the names of homologous series. You also learned about the structure of a functional group. You learned about the structure of functional group for all your functional groups. And you also learned about the names of the functional group. Like here in alcohol, this OH represented by a hydroxyl group. So that's what you have learned in previous lesson. And also in aldehyde, you learned this is the structure of a functional group and the name of the functional group is a formula group. You also learned about a carbonyl group that are found in ketone, the C double bond uh, O, it's a carbonyl group. You also learned about carboxyl group. And yes, lastly, you learned about ester. And something also very important that you learned about in previous lesson is uh, different structural isomers. First, you learned what the definition of structural isomer, being organic molecules with the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. From then you learn that there are three different types of structural isomers, being your chain isomer, a positional isomer, and the functional isomer. And here it's a quick example of how you would see a chain isomer. You've got your butane and two methylpropane. So there is your chain with four carbons in your parent chain. And in this case, there's three carbons in your longest chain. So we're gonna call this a chain isomer. You also learned about the positional isomer, where is the same molecular formula, but different position of the side chain substituent or a functional isomer. So in this case, we have our chlorine here. So the chloro is here on first carbon, but in this case, the chloro, it is on the second carbon. So the two, we call them the positional isomer because our functional group, it has changed a position from position one to position two. Moreover, you have learned about IUPAC naming of this compound. What you have learned in previous lesson is if you are given a structural formula, how do you draw how do you rather name an IUPAC name of that structural formula? Or if you have an IUPAC name, how do you draw a structural formula? This would be some of the questions that I uh, would look at shortly. So that was a quick recap of what you have learned in the previous session. Like I've indicated at the beginning, this session would be more about 
questions and answers. How do you get to answer questions related to nomenclature, which is the naming? So we're gonna start with the question. So let's look at this particular question. So it reads that millions of organic compounds are known to date. And we've got the three compounds represented by P, Q and S as shown in the table below. What I would always advise for you to do is that before you can even attempt to answer the question, you need to look at those compounds and perhaps list some of the things that you know about that compound, okay? I would start with compound P. I would start with compound P. Compound P, it says it's A, it says it's a methanol, okay? So now let's check, it says it's a methanol. So when it's methanol, I look at this L. When I see this L, already I know this al is a suffix of an aldehyde so as it is already i know that uh, compound p is an aldehyde why because it ends with al so then i know that this is an aldehyde okay this meth part tells me that it's an aldehyde with one carbon so the meth represents that there is one carbon okay so because of one carbon, I know that uh, the meth would represent one carbon. So this one, I know it has one carbon and uh, it ends with al, it means it's an aldehyde, okay? So that's some of the things that I know about this. And also with aldehyde, what more do I know? I also know that the carbonyl group, okay? The carbonyl group, it is at the end, okay? So I know that the carbonyl group, it is at the end, that's why it becomes a, a methanol, okay? Which is an aldehyde, all right? So those are some of the things that I know about the compound P. Let me look at compound Q. When I look at compound Q, the first thing I can see is the functional group. So there is the functional group. I see this functional group. This functional group, we call it a, carbonyl group, okay? I see a carbonyl group. So this carbonyl group, it is between the two carbons. It is between the two carbons, okay? So if this carbonyl group, it is between the two carbons, now what that tells me, okay? Already I know that, okay, because the carbonyl group is between two carbons, therefore it means this now is a ketone, okay? So the homologous series would be a ketone because a carbonyl group, it is between the two carbons. It is between this carbon and this carbon. So this becomes a ketone, okay? So now I can see that it has uh, four carbons. So it is but, uh, would check, perhaps they'll ask us to write the IUPAC name of this. But please, the difference between P and Q is that the carbonyl group, in Q, it is between the carbons, then it becomes a ketone. In this case, the carbonyl group, it is on the first carbon, so it becomes an aldehyde. Okay, so that's something that I know about uh, compound Q, that it would be a ketone, and it has a carbonyl group in it. Okay, so let me look at compound S. With compound S, First thing I like to identify a functional group. I can see there is my functional group. There is my functional group. So my functional group, it is an OH. So if my functional group is an OH, it means it's a hydroxyl group, okay? There's a hydroxyl group. So this hydroxyl group, I know that this now compound becomes an alcohol. The homologous series would be an alcohol because of this functional group, which is a hydroxyl group, okay? So it means here I have learned different uh, functional groups because in here I have an hydroxyl group. Here on a ketone, I have a carbonyl group. And here on aldehyde, I have a formula group. So I've learned about 
there are at least three different functional groups. So it's an alcohol, okay? So now I've identified the functional groups together with the homologous series for this various compound, okay? And while still at this compound S, because of it's an alcohol, I know that there are different types of alcohol, okay? So there's a primary alcohol, there's a secondary alcohol, and there's also a tertiary. Perhaps an examiner might ask me uh, something around those types of alcohol. Okay. So now we have analyzed our question to try to get what we know and what we do not know about the question. Now let's look at the first question, which is 7.1. It says, write down the following. The structural formula of the functional group of P. A structural formula of a functional group of P. It's important to note that the question does not ask the structural formula of P, but the structural formula of a functional group of P. So please do not make a mistake of drawing a structure of compound P because that is not what the question asks. It asks you to draw the structural formula of the functional group of P, okay? So now let's go and look at P. First, we know that P is an aldehyde. So because we know it's an aldehyde, it is a formally group, okay? So it's an aldehyde, it's a formally group. So how do we draw now the structural formula of the functional group, okay? Now we start to draw. I would use this open space here to draw the structure of a functional group, okay? So now I would say there is my C, okay? There is my C, there is my carbonyl, then I put an H here, okay? But I have to also remember to put a bond here, okay? Because around, around carbon, there should always be four bond around carbon. And of course, around oxygen, there should be two bonds and around hydrogen, there should be one bond. So now this is my structural formula of the functional group of P. This is the structural formula of a functional group of P. If they could have asked me the, the name of the functional group, I was going to say it's a formally group, okay? I was going to say uh, it's a formally group, okay? I was going to say it's a formally group, okay? If they ask me about the name of the functional group, it's a formally group, okay? Uh, another thing important, please you leave it as is do not be tempted to put a hydrogen here okay because as soon as you put a hydrogen here now you have drew the structure of this compound p which is methanol so if you put the hydrogen here it becomes a methanol and the question did not ask us to draw the structure of p is it it asked us to draw the structure of the functional group of P. So it's very important that you get to distinguish whether you are drawing the structure of the compound or you are drawing a structure of a functional group of that compound. I think I had to put an emphasis on that one. I hope we, we, we follow and would do the correct things come the exam. So we are done with uh, first question, okay? We are done with first question, uh, which is 7.1.1. Now let's continue right along, okay? So now let's continue right along, okay? So now when we continue right along, now we want to go to uh, the second question. It says, the homologous series, the homologous series to which Q belongs. 
okay? The homologous series to which Q belongs. Every time a question asks you about homologous series, the answer that we expect from you is one of the nine, which is either you say alkane, alkene, alkyne, haloalkane, alcohols, aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid, or ester. So those are the names of the homologous series. So now let's look at Q. Before we can know its homologous series, we need to know its functional group. When we look at the functional group here, we see a carbonyl group, okay? You see a carbonyl group. We said this is your uh, carbonyl, okay? So this is your carbonyl group. So we see a carbonyl group, which is between the carbons. So now we already know that this now, because the carbonyl group is between the two carbons, we know that this has to be a what? A ketone. This has to be a ketone. So now, if they ask us this, now we know that the homologous series of Q, it would be a ketone. Okay? So it would be a ketone. Okay? It would be a keto. There it is. I think you can see my handwriting is not that uh, beautiful as yours because I'm using a mouse. So yes, that would be a ketone, which is the homologous series of Q. Okay. Now the next question now say uh, the structural formula the structural formula of isomer of Q. Now they want us a structural formula of an isomer of Q. And in this case, examiner did not explicitly tell us to say whether we're gonna draw a chain isomer or whether we're gonna draw a positional isomer or whether we're gonna draw a functional isomer. But now, when we look at this question, okay, when we look at this question, we come to realize that it is not possible to draw the chain isomer because with the chain isomer, we want a different chain. Okay, with this one, uh, we cannot draw a chain isomer. So we already say uh, it, it can be a chain isomer. So what then can it be? We try to check, can we do a positional isomer? If we try to check at positional isomer, it means we need to move this in between here. But now we see that if we move this carbonyl group to this carbon, this carbonyl group would still be in the second carbon. Here it's one, it's two. So this carbonyl group it is in a second carbon. Even if we move it, we put it this side, it will still be on a second carbon. So clearly we seem not to get a positional isomer from this. Now this leaves us with the last option, which is to say, perhaps this can be a functional isomer because when we move this carbonyl group here at the first carbon or maybe on this first carbon starting from left so now we can get something different okay so now it means uh, the examiner essentially wanted us to find a functional isomer and while still at that we already know a functional isomer of a ketone becomes an aldehyde. It's important that you know that the functional isomer of a ketone becomes an aldehyde. And a functional isomer of an ester becomes a carboxylic acid. So that combination is very, very important that you know that. Okay. So now let's draw the structural formula of an isomer of Q, which we seem to have determined that it would be a functional isomer. So it means we need to move this 
to the first carbon, okay? So as it can become an aldehyde, okay? But it's important that we remember what are the isomers, okay? So the structural isomer are those organic molecules with the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. And three types of structural isomer being the chain isomer, positional isomer, as well as the functional isomer. Okay, so now let's draw the structure of uh, is isomer of Q. Okay, we said we're gonna take this carbonyl group and we move it to the first carbon. Okay, so I'm gonna draw it right down here. Then it would be, there is my C, there is my double bond, oh, there is my carbonyl, it is on the first carbon, so it means I have to put a hydrogen here, okay, okay, it is on the first carbon, so now how many carbons do I have, one, two, three, four, so it means then it will be first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, and fourth carbon. Okay, so now I have to complete by putting the bonds. So one, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. So these are hydrogens. These are hydrogens. These are hydrogens. This is also another hydrogen, another hydrogen, another hydrogen, and another hydrogen. Okay. So now this would be the structural formula of isomer of Q. Okay. This will be a structural formula of isomer of Q. Let's just make sure that we have everything right. We can check and say, how many carbons do we have here? So one, two, three, four. It means it would be C4, okay? How many hydrogens do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it means I have hydrogen. This is my uh, molecular formula. We said it's eight, okay? Eight hydrogens and how many oxygens? There's one. There is one oxygen. So this is the molecular formula of this compound. Let's check the formula, uh, the molecular formula of this uh, structural isomer of Q that we drew, just to confirm if we have uh, drew the correct thing. Carbons one, two, three, four. So it means it would be C. Uh, four. How many hydrogens? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight hydrogens. Okay, these are subscripts. And only one oxygen. So there's one oxygen. Tada, now this and this are the same. So they have the same molecular formula, but now different functional groups. So they become the functional isomers because on this I have a formula group and on this I've got a, a carbonyl group between the carbons. So different functional group also means it would be different homologous series. That's why this one is a ketone and this one now becomes an aldehyde. I hope you have followed how we came to get an answer. Okay. The last question, which is 7.2, it says, S represent an alcohol. So they tell us it's an alcohol. And in our analysis earlier, we did say that the homologous series will be an alcohol because we have seen a hydroxyl group. Okay, so indeed it's an alcohol. Now what examiner want us to say would be to classify this alcohol as either a primary, a tertiary, or a primary, 
secondary or tertiary alcohol. Okay. So now let's go and look at it. How do you attempt this question? First, you need to know what is a primary alcohol, what is the secondary and tertiary. So the first thing that we look at, we look at this carbon, okay? We look at this carbon, the carbon which is attached to the OH. When you look at that carbon attached to OH, there is the carbon. Then we say, there is the carbon attached to OH, okay? So now let's check this carbon. How many other carbons is it attached to? So the carbon attached to OH is attached to one, two, three carbons. Okay? So it means because it's attached to three carbons, then we're going to call this a tertiary alcohol. So a tertiary alcohol therefore becomes when a carbon attached to OH is also attached to three other carbons. Okay? So that is how we know that it's a tertiary alcohol. If the carbon attached to OH is attached to two, it becomes a secondary alcohol. But if a carbon attached to OH is attached to one carbon directly, then it becomes your primary. But in our case, this is a what? This is a tertiary alcohol. So there would be our answer. We're gonna say this type of alcohol is a tertiary alcohol. And I think you have followed how we analyze this question and how we come to get an answers. Okay. So now, let's uh let's see let's see if we can now move uh forward okay so now let's see and and move forward to the next uh, slide okay now there is our next slide okay on the next slide what we have they say Letters A to F in the table below represent six organic compounds. Okay, it's A, B, C, D, E, and F. So indeed, there are six organic compounds. Okay, so let's analyze it. At, at the very least, try to talk about the functional group that we get and maybe the names of those functional groups. Okay and also the homologous series, okay? So let's start with A. In A, you can see in A, there is a double bond. So this is our functional group, there is a double bond. It's important to remember what is a functional group, okay? Remember we say a functional group is an atom, a bond, or a group of atoms, okay? So now, Therefore, this part of the bond is important, okay? So now, there we are, this double bond is a, fun it's a functional group, and we know that uh, if there's a double bond between the carbon and carbon atoms, then this become an alkene. So this would be an alkene. So we already know this would be an alkene. We come to this one. On this one, we can already see, please take note, these are not all hydrogens and carbon, okay? Here we have something here. We have this bromine, okay? This bromine, this bromine, this bromo, we know that because of this bromo, this becomes a haloalkanes, where one hydrogen or more is being replaced with a halogen. Okay, so this becomes a haloalkane. Now we know this. And this becomes a, a butanal because of this al, we know that this would now be an aldehyde. We spoke so much about an aldehyde 
in the previous question. So this will become an aldehyde. There is a formula group in, in, in C because it's an aldehyde, okay? And it's built, so because of that, there are four carbons. We expect four carbons in the long chain, okay? Now we try to analyze D. When we analyze D, we check uh, in D, if we can look at this, this part, okay? Maybe if I have to use, uh, if I have to use my pen to try to show you the part I'm talking about, this part, this part already tells me something. This part tells me this is a carboxyl group, okay? This part tells me this is a carboxyl group. So if it's a carboxyl group, it means therefore this falls under the carboxylic acid. Okay, this falls under carboxylic acid. So this is my carboxyl group. Okay, and there is the double bond that we are talking about up there. If I can have to alight, and there is the bromine, and there is the al to show that it's an aldehyde, okay? You look at this, okay? It looks like an alkane. This looks like an alkane E. It's an alkane, there's a single bond between every carbon and carbon atom and between the carbon and nitrogen. So this is an alkane, okay? We just see that there are substituents, okay? We see there's a methyl and there's also a methyl from this side, okay? So we look at F. When we look at F, we see that with F we are given a name, which is uh, ethyl methanoate, okay? Already when we look at F, we can say this is our ester, okay? When we look at F, we can see this is our ester, okay? I always jokingly with my learners and say it has a name and the surname. So this is your ester. The first part of the name we know is from the alcohol that has formed it. And the second part is from the carboxylic acid, okay? Because an ester is obtained when an alcohol and a carboxylic acid uh, are reacting together, okay? So we know it's an ester, all right? So I guess we have analyzed our question and we know just about everything there is to know about this compound, okay? Now let's go and attempt to answer the questions, all right? The questions read that write down the letter or letters that represent two hydrocarbons. Before I can even get the letter that represent the hydrocarbons, I have to first know what is a hydrocarbon. We say a hydrocarbon are the organic molecules consisting of hydrogen and carbon only. So the hydrocarbons are organic compound consisting of hydrogen and carbon only. So I have to look where there is a hydrogen and carbon only, okay? We can start from A. If we start from A, I see there's a carbon, there's a carbon, there's a carbon. So yes, this looks like a hydrocarbon because there's only carbon and hydrogen, carbon and hydrogen. So then we're gonna call this a hydrocarbon. So the first letter of a hydrocarbon, I think we have already found it. So it would be A, okay? We get to B. In B, there's a bromine. So the bromine is not the hydrogen. So now we've got another atom. So no, 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 no. Uh, we don't take this as a hydrocarbon, okay? By the way, it's a, a haloalkane. Then the butanal, okay? The butanal is an aldehyde. So at times you'd say, does it have carbon and and oxygen only, you do not know. You might say, let me draw it. You can choose to draw it and say it would be, this is the first, but means four, so one, two, okay. 
three, four, but it's an aldehyde. So on the first carbon, there should be a formula group. Okay. There is my formula group. So now what is left is for me to put hydrogens. Okay. To put hydrogens. Okay. There is the hydrogen, sorry. There is my hydrogen right here. There is my hydrogen. There is my hydrogen. There is my hydrogen. Okay. Good. So this is butanol. There's a formula group, carbonyl group. It is on the first carbon. So it's butanol. So does it have a carbon and hydrogen only? No, 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 it does not. There is also an oxygen here. So this one failed the test. We come to D. D has a carbon and also there's oxygen. It failed the test. Remember, we want carbons and hydrogen only. Okay. You come to D. I see there's a carbon, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen. Wow. Seemingly, E also has a carbon and hydrogen only. Then I come here and say the answer would be A and E. Okay. So now this is an ester. You can choose to also draw the structure of ester if you like, but already they just wanted two of the hydrocarbons and you've already found them. And another method to go about it would be, you have to know that the hydrocarbons, their homologous series is alkane, alkene, and alkyne. So alkane, alkene, alkyne are the only hydrocarbons. Anything else with a different homologous series cannot be regarded as a hydrocarbon. You can use that method also to make life easy for you. If you find it tedious to move around and checking for uh, carbon and hydrogen in each compound, that method can also works well for you. Good. So that was 10.1.1. In 10.1.2, they want us to give them the letter of a carboxylic acid. Okay? The letter of a carboxylic acid. I think when we are analyzing our question, we did mention that this part represents a, a carbo. We said it's a carboxyl. There is my B. This part represents my carboxyl group. Okay, this part represents a carboxyl group. So because now we have a carboxyl group, we know that carboxyl group, it is found in the carboxylic acid, okay? So now we can safely say our compound D would be a carboxylic acid. Why? Because there is a carboxyl group which is found in the carboxylic acid, okay? So now, which makes our answer for this to be the letter D. Okay, the letter D would represent a carboxylic acid. Why? Because there is a carboxyl group in that compound. And that carboxyl group is only found in a carboxylic acid. And yeah, as it is now, we are done with this first part of the questions. There are other questions on the next page. I will keep on moving back uh, to this table to remind ourselves of some of this compound as we move to the next page. Okay. In the next page, they say, write down the IUPAC name of compound B. So they want the IUPAC name of compound B. So let's go and look at compound B. There we are, okay? There we are. We have to write the name of the uh, IUPAC name of compound B. It's a haloalkane, okay? So if we have to write the IUPAC name, we're gonna start looking at the 
a parent chain or what we call a longest continuous chain which contains a functional group okay so now because we have this bromine as a substituent as well as a methyl as a substituent okay so these two are both substituents so already we can see that our longest chain would be one two three okay our longest chain would be one two three even here one two three so we're gonna take this as our longest chain so there is our longest chain okay it has three carbons okay so now this is our longest chain which has three carbons okay so now because it has three carbons it would be prop okay because it has three carbons it would be prop uh, i just want to erase this part okay i'm going to write down here it seems like i have uh, enough space here so it would be a uh, prop okay so it would be prop okay ne? it would be prop okay it was supposed to be propane okay it was supposed to be propane so because there's a single bond between the carbon and uh carbon atoms so we know it would be a propane so it will end with a I'll, okay so it's a it's n it's e there is the a it's a propane so it was going to be propane if there was no substituent right if there was no substituent this was going to be a propane but now there are substituents you can't call it a propane if now they are substituent. So now we need to come here to now write the substituents. Okay. Now, how are we going to number? If you start numbering from this side, it would be one, two, and three. So a substituent would be at carbon number two and three. Okay. So it would be best to start here. We say it's one, is two, and this is three. So as our substituent would be on the first carbon and on the second carbon, okay? We want our substituent to take the uh, least possible number if uh, the, the situation is like this, okay? So now my substituent is on carbon number one and carbon number two. But when I name here, I don't name them numerically. So I don't start because of a number. I start because of the alphabetic order. So what is the alphabetic order? You check promo, you check methyl. So there is a methyl, there is a promo. So promo B comes before meth. So it means I have to start first with this promo, okay? But please, I did not start with promo because it was on number one. I'm gonna start with promo because in alphabetic order, the promo is going to start before the methyl, okay? then it means it would be one promo. Okay, there you are. So one promo, okay? But between a number and a letter, you need to put the word, you put a hyphen. So there is your hyphen, okay? Uh, maybe i can re erase this part because everything now it's mixed together uh, between a number and a letter there should be a hyphen okay between a number and a letter there should be a hyphen so it means it would be one then there is my promo okay it would be one promo i've started with promo because of alphabetic order but it's also a method so then i would say there is two okay there is a two ne? then there is a two and there is what there is a methyl another substituent okay then there is a methyl
okay so there will be one two promo i mean one promo two methyl propane okay so let me quickly take my propane down so as it forms part of this whole name so you can see that is one name now let me right here we said it was propane so now between a letter and a letter you don't write anything okay so this is metal it's an l so it's prop because of three carbons it's a because it's a halo alkane aha wow this looks now like it so it would be one promo two methyl propane between a number and a letter you put this okay you put the hyphen please do remember that a number letter hyphen okay is very important but between the letter and the letter you, you put nothing you don't write anything so that is the question what the question wanted the iupac name of compound b good so now let's go to the next one they want the iupac name of compound e so let's go to compound e compound e let's look at it there you are so let's look at the longest carbon chain that is a functional group if any one two three four five six one two three four one two three four five one two three four five so it means the longest chain is one two three four five six so i'm going to take this as my longest chain okay so it has six carbons so now there is a substituent and another substituent okay so this is a methyl and this is also a methyl a substituent with one carbon becomes a methyl substituent with two carbons it becomes an uh, an ethyl and the substituent with three carbons it becomes a propyl okay it's important you remember that so now we've got uh we've got six carbons in our chain so now let's start uh, to put the numbers if you start from here it would be one two three four five so your substituent would be on carbon number three and five but we said our substituent should take the smallest number in such a scenario so it means therefore we need to do what we need to start this side it would be one two three four five and six so now on carbon number two we have a methyl and also on carbon number four there is a methyl okay so this as it is it was going to be one two three four five six so it was going to be our remember we've got the methane which is one we've got ethane if We've got a uh, prop, we've got butte, okay? then we've got a uh, pent, okay? okay? We've got uh, we've got pent, okay? Then in this case, now what do we have? We've got six carbons, isn't it? Okay, and there are substituents, okay? Then we've got hex okay so it would be a hex so in this case it would be a hex okay it's a hexane okay so now it would be hexane uh just a second now let's move and uh let's just erase this we know it was going to be hexane if there was no substituent but now let's let's write it somewhere here to create a space for us okay so i'm creating a space for us okay
so it was going to be hexane uh, now but there's a substituent here methyl on carbon number two and another methyl on carbon number four so if that's the case we're gonna say it would be two comma four so between a number and a number you need to put comma okay so it would be two comma four you have two methyl so because it's two methyl you're gonna say die die means two so it would be die methyl so there are two methyls therefore it's gonna be die methyl so it was gonna be two comma four carbon number two and carbon number four there is a methyl and methyl becomes dimethyl and this would be your hexane because it has six carbons in its parent chain very good now we have named uh, compound e okay which is what the question wanted so now let's look at the iupac name of compound f oh they say the iupac name of compound f is given in the table before below yes they gave us that uh they gave us that f is what let's go back f is the ethyl ethanoid okay so the name of that we said is an ester homologous series so now let's check they say the structural formula of compound f so they want us to draw the structural formula of compound f okay so there is what they want okay i think this spacing would not be sufficient for me if you allow me let me draw the structural formula somewhere down here okay so i want ethyl methanoate okay but every time i draw a structural formula the first thing important is for me to know the functional group so there is a functional group of ester okay there is the functional group of ester okay i know that ester would look okay i know that esters would look something like this okay i know that esters would look something like this so now they say it's an ethyl this part is from the alcohol formed so the alcohol would be after the o okay so it means it's ethyl it has two carbons there is my two carbons okay then here it's your hydrogen 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 and also here hydrogen okay so this part would represent the ethyl this is the ethyl that they spoke about and they say methanoate so methanoate we know it was from methanoic acid okay so it means it was from methanoic acid and methanoic acid has only one carbon which is this carbon with this so it means on this i have to close it okay I have to close this and yeah this structure would represent your ethyl methanoate just to make sure you know the part with this O the carbonyl part would be for an acid and you know that this other part it will be from alcohol so this is the structure of compound F I think we are done with that it's easy to draw you need to look at the acid and the alcohol from which this ester is formed okay so we are done with f the homologous series to which f belong we already said it this was an ester so that is the homologous series for f we already answered that question the iupac name of an alcohol that was used to prepare f okay now we check this first part represent alcohol 
the second part represent an acid okay so now because they talk of an alcohol which is ethyl it means they were using ethanol so ethyl they were using ethanol so the IUPAC name of that alcohol in this would be ethanol because they said it's an ethyl so the first part represent alcohol so it would be ethanol okay so it would be ethanol uh, now this looks like it okay ne? it's an ethanol so it's an ethanol my o there is my o it's an ethanol and we said here it's an ester the homologous series to which this belong it's an ester and please spell the ester correct not like the names of other persons so it's an ester it does not have an h okay the structure we drew be, uh, before write down the homologous series to which c belong okay uh we see c it's al we already said that, that because of al this becomes an aldehyde we mentioned it when we were uh, doing okay okay so we did mention that uh, it would be an aldehyde because of the al so here it would be uh, an aldehyde okay so this one would be aldehyde okay this will be aldehyde okay because they said it's a butanal so that al tells us that this is an aldehyde this is an al aldehyde it ends with al so c is an aldehyde so the structural formula of a ketone that the struct okay the structural formula of a ketone that is a structural isomer of compound C. So it means they don't want us to draw compound C, okay? Essentially, they don't want us to draw compound C and we already drew it for them. They want us to draw its functional uh, isomer, okay? So they want us to draw its uh, structural isomer, okay? So we can draw its structural isomer, which we know that it would be a ketone. Okay, so it means we need to take that uh, carbonyl group, we put it between the carbons for it to be a keto. Okay, structural formula of a ketone, that is a structural, okay, yes. So just, okay, there's an aldehyde, so yes, we are drawing a ketone. So it means there will be a carbonyl group between the two carbons there is my structural formula of a functional group of a ketone but now this ketone has uh, four carbons okay so it has four carbons i have to add another carbon here okay i have to add another carbon here okay now there is my complete structure Okay. This is a structure of a functional group. They told that it will be a ketone. Okay, so there is the ketone, the carbonyl group between the two carbons. Then this makes a structure of a ketone. Very good. So this is what we want. So C, we can see it here. This is C4 H. Eight and O. So even on that previous one, it was going to be C4. Yeah. So this is C4, H10, and O. So it means these are indeed isomers, same molecular formula, but now this looks like it's a functional isomer. So, but a different functional group. Okay. And yes, that is how we are going to approach that question. Okay, so remember I said we are on a question and answer basis. 
So we're going to continue right along with other questions that we have lined up for you. So there we are. So we are looking at the structure. They say letters from A, of course, uh, we have up to I in this case. Uh, on the table below represent different organic compounds. Okay. So there are different organic compounds. We spoke about so much now. This we already know. It's an alkene. This, because of the all, is an alcohol. Because of this, it would be alkyne. Because of the al, it would be aldehyde. Because of this part, it would be a carboxylic acid. Because of this part, it would be a ketone. So this is an alkene. We can maybe write only the homologous series. This is an alkene before you answer the question. It's an alkene because there's a double bond here. This is an all, therefore this would be an alcohol. Okay. This would be an alcohol. This will be an alkyne because of that ion. Alkyne, okay. Uh, okay, this would be an alkyne. So it's A L Al yes. Alkyne. That's why it ended with this ion. And we say this would be our aldehyde. Okay, this would be our aldehyde. Okay, aldehyde because of this al. And because of this carboxyl, the, because of this carboxyl, this will become a carboxylic acid. Okay, if you allow me, I'll use the arrow and use the spacing. This would be a carboxylic So this will become a carboxylic acid. Okay. This will become a carboxylic acid. Okay. And seemingly also this one, by the way, this one, this part and this part is exactly the same. Just they drew this part on this end on the left and this part on that other end. But this part and this part are the same. So if you allow me, I can use this arrow again to indicate that even here is a carboxylic acid. And because of this one here, it tells me something to say this is the what? The keto. So what I did in this one is just to name the, the functional groups, okay? Is to name the functional group. How I many we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So about six functional groups uh, are gonna be tested and more, okay? So now let's look at the question. It says, write down the homologous series to which each of the following belongs. So they start with A, okay? So we already said it, okay? We already said it. A, we said it's a alkene, okay? So we already said it, that A is an alkene because we saw a double bond between the carbons. A is an alkene. And they speak of F, so let's go and look at compound F. Compound F, I just mentioned that it's a carboxylic acid because of this carboxyl group, the C double O H. Okay. So that's a carboxyl group. Okay. So because of that, F it would be a carboxylic acid. Okay. So it would be a carboxylic acid. It would be a carboxylic acid. This is my A. 
Okay, and this will be a carboxylic acid. We are done with 12.1. Uh, 12.2. 12 12 which two compound in the above table are hydrocarbons? I think we have spoke about hydrocarbons containing hydrogen and carbon only. So we have to go and look at the compounds that contains uh, hydrogen and carbon only and give a reason for your answer. Okay. When we give a reason for your answer, our reasoning would be defining a hydrocarbon. So we're going to say uh, organic compounds consisting of hydrogen and carbon only. Okay. So they will, we would say that they consist of hydrogen and carbon only. So let's go and look at those compounds containing carbon and, and hydrogen only. Does this contain hydrogen and carbon only? Yes. So A is the first answer. Okay. This one we know it's an alcohol, so there's an OH. So this cannot be an answer. So our first answer is A. There's an alkyne. We know that it contains uh, hydrogen and carbon only. So this is another answer. It means our answer lies in A and C. I, I don't have to even waste time going and reading others. I might even confuse myself along the way. So the correct answer here that represent, ne? it would be A, okay, and C. Anyway, I know that uh, hydrocarbons are alkanes, alkenes and alkynes. So in this case, I've got alkene and alkyne. So yeah, you say indeed they are hydrocarbons. Two compounds, okay? That two compounds in the above table that are unsaturated and give a reason for your answer. So it means our reasoning for, for our answer would be definition of unsaturated, okay? So it would be the definition of unsaturated, okay? So on unsaturated, we know there is a double, okay, or triple bond. There is a double or triple bond, okay, uh, covalently bonded between the carbon and carbon atoms, okay. So double or triple bond between the carbon and carbon atoms, we know that it would be unsaturated, okay. But if we have a single bond between it would be saturated. So in this case, what do they want? Unsaturated. So I'm saying when they say give a reason for your answer, you give a definition of a hydrocarbon. That because those compound contains hydrogen and carbon only, here you'd say there is a double or triple bond, uh, covalently bonded between two carbons. Okay. So let's go and check where there is a double bond and where there is a triple bond. Okay. There is a double bond between the carbon and carbon. It means A is correct. There's a double bond. And in butyne, we know this ion tell us there's a triple bond. So without any shadow of doubt, we know that even C, even at C, we are going to have a triple bond. So double bond, triple bond, they are unsaturated hydrocarbons. So it means answer yet again, uh, it becomes A and C. But the reason for an answer is different. In the first one, you define what is a hydrocarbon. And in the second one, you define what is a unsaturated compound. So there we are. This would be your sin. Okay. Now let's go to the next question. Uh, they want the IUPAC name of G. They want the IUPAC name of G. Where it's G, there you are. Okay. So they want the IUPAC name of G. Maybe we can write it here if we want. Uh, IUPAC. So we can write IUPAC name here. So now this is a carboxylic acid. We don't have to mention 
mention anything about the position of a functional group. So we just count the number of carbons, one, two, three, four. Okay, so it will be but so it will be but and no we guess it. Okay, so it would be you tanoic. It's very important that you remember carboxylic acid and with oic acid. Uh, okay, acid. The R, the C comes before the I. Okay, so it would be. Butanoic acid. Okay, do we have any substituent? No, which is good. So it means our answer will just end as this. It would be butanoic acid. So that would be because of the four carbons. And yes, because of carboxyl group, then it's a carboxylic acid. Therefore, it will be butanoic acid. You need to remember the suffix, okay, of a, an acid, which is carboxylic acid. Okay. So I think we have answered C, 12.4 uh, for G. Okay. The next question now wants us to write down the structural formula of, com okay. Write down the structural formula of a functional group. Okay, by the way, here we said It's but he said it's a butanoic acid. So it's butanoic acid. They say write down the structural formula of the functional group of B. Very important. They don't want the structural formula of B but the functional group of B. So let's go and see what is B. B is an alcohol, okay? B is an alcohol. So I think you remember the structural formula of an alcohol, okay? So B is an alcohol, the structural formula of a functional group of an alcohol, there it is. You just have to put OH right here. Thereafter, make sure that the carbon has four bond around it. So that would be the structural formula of the functional group of B. It's not the structure of B, please. It's the structure of a functional group of B. Okay. That is how we are going to, to, to draw it. Okay. So this will be our B. Okay the structural formula of, of, of B, okay? So the structural formula of B, okay? So let's go back, okay? We know it's an alcohol, we are fine. Now the next question wants compound C. So now they want us to draw the structural formula of compound C. Let's go ahead, compound, look at compound C. Hmm. There it is. So that is compound C, okay? And that's compound C, okay? So please allow me to, uh, to create a space, okay? So to create a space by taking this things out, we already spoke about them, they are carboxylic acid. I'm gonna draw the structure of C right below here, okay? It would be easier. Uh, now, the structure of this is built. So how many carbons? There is one, uh, this carbon now it's long. Uh, this carbon bond, okay. So now it would be one, two, three, and four, okay. But they say it's butyne, 
so it means there is a, a triple bond okay so there's a triple bond so because here there is two it means triple bond was between carbon number two and three okay triple bond was carbon number two and three so it will be one two even when you come here when you come here it would be one it would be one two you can't put it here it should be between carbon number one and two and three so there it should be our triple bond let me just uh, nicely draw it so now there is where i'm going to get my triple bond one two three is between one two three so between two and three even when i come from here it's one two mid b two and three so it's okay so this carbon has four bonds this carbon has four bonds so now we have to include the other bonds here here you don't include anything you don't include anything you come here you put another bond then you bond it to hydrogen because it's a hydrocarbon remember so there should be a carbon and hydrogen only okay so that's how it's going to look like only if i can take this one out and try to draw it nicely aha there you are there's a triple bond to say it's an alkyne the triple bond it says at two so it means it's between carbon number two and three we take the smallest number which is two so there it is it has four carbons four carbons and on this side we also have four carbons yeah we have completed with this it's built so there's four carbons okay yeah and yeah but this should be the correct answer for a structure of c okay so we have done this compound c on the diagram and now they want the structure of compound d and after d we're going to draw for i so when we get that side we will look for compound d draw the structure and look for compound i also draw a structure okay so let's quickly go there for d and i so they want the structure of d okay then after i okay so the one of d i'll draw it here let me create space for me there is a space that i want to use we already spoke about this okay so i want the structure of d so the structure of d it would be it's a propanal so it means it's an aldehyde so the first thing for me to draw okay it would be my functional group okay the first thing for me to draw it would be my functional group okay let me draw my functional group which is a formula group there you go okay this is your all then there is your formula group okay but now how many carbons we have is prop so there's three one two three so now we have three carbons okay so that would be the structure of compound d then aldehyde there's a functional group formula group where the carbonyl group it is on the first carbon and yes three means there's prop so it would be propana that would be the correct structure for, for d okay so the next question now they want us to draw the structure of okay this is d this is a structure of compound d okay can okay. this if you like okay so now they want the structure of i also 
so which is uh, 2,4 dimethyl propan 3 on. Okay, so let's try to draw it maybe right here. Okay, it would be prop or pentan, so it will be five carbons. Okay, but it's a it's a ketone, so it means they should be a double bond, which is a carbonyl between the carbons. Okay, there should be a carbonyl between the carbons. Okay, but now this has to be in carbon number three. Okay, this should be in carbon number three. Okay, where this is pent, so it means we have to put C here and another C here. If we can choose to put a C in this other side, now this carbonyl group would be on carbon number two and it will not be correct if we can put a uh, join the C's on the other end. Okay. Similarly, if we join them on this other end, it will not be correct. So it should be in carbon number three. So it's correct this way. Okay. Okay. Then you put your hydrogens. Okay. You put hydrogens. You put hydrogens and you put hydrogens. Now, uh, on carbon number two, on carbon number two and four, there's a metal. Okay? Because when you come here, it's one, two, three. When you come here, one, two, three is the same thing. So let's start counting from this side. We call it one, two. So on this carbon, there is also a methyl. So I started counting from this side. There is a methyl. Methyl is CH3. So there is a methyl. Okay, then I can complete this one. I can complete this one. Okay. Then I have to remember also here to have four carbons. So on carbon number two, there's methyl. And what did they say also? Dimethyl. So it means there's another methyl, but another one is on carbon number four. So it is one, two, three, four. So on this, there's also a methyl. Okay. So I have to come and now re replace this H with the methyl. Okay. So now there's a C. Okay, there is a methyl, there is my H, there is my H, and also there is my H. So there is a methyl on carbon number two, there is a methyl on carbon number three, and this is a ketone, the carbonyl group, there it is. It is on carbon number three, which is three starting counting from here. Okay, and this will be the structure of uh, compound I. This would be the structure of compound I. It looks correct. So yeah, make sure that the carbon has all the bonds. Okay, four bonds around it. And hydrogen one, oxygen, there should be two. Okay, so that would be the structure of E. Okay, so now let's uh, continue, write the law. Uh, which compound above which two compounds above are structural isomer? Only write it down the letter representing those, okay? And give a reason for your answer. So when you give a reason for your answer, you're gonna define what is a structural isomer, okay? So when you give a reason for your answer, you have to define what is the structural isomer. Same molecular formula, but different structural formula, okay? Okay, so let's look and see if we have uh, if we have the structures which are isomers. Okay, 
Okay. So let's look at this car box. This car box, like I said. Okay. I see here you've got uh, how many carbons? Here it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here you have uh, one, two, three, four. So it can't be. Okay. This one, it can't be. So now this two cannot work. So, and with uh, alcohol, okay. So with alcohol, propanol, okay. It has oxygen, okay. So it has OH rather, it has an OH and three carbons. So, okay. So let's see if we can get another thing which has three carbons, okay. So let's look between this, okay. So it's gonna be, Uh, they said it is two, okay? So it means the OH is not on the first carbon, it is on the second carbon, okay? So the OH would be on the second carbon. So they will be our OH on this carbon. Ah, man, uh, it is still on the, sorry. It is still on the first carbon. They said the two, the two also, our OH has to be here. Okay. There is our OH. There will be our H. There would be our H. Our H. Our H. Our age, our age, and our age. Okay, so there we are. C three. Okay, hydrogens three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is C three. Okay, this is C three. Okay, this is C three. Then the hydrogen three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's gonna be H8 and oxygen. Okay. Let's look at uh, this other one. Okay. Let's look at this other one, propana. Let's check if uh, it cannot work out. Let's check if it cannot work out. Uh, do we have a structure? No, we were not. Okay, we don't have the structure of, of compound. Oh, D, there we are, sorry. There is a structure of compound D. So this is C3, one, two, three, hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six and, okay, there's also, there's also an oxygen, okay. So it means this, this combination cannot work out. So this B and D, they cannot work out. Oh yeah, let's look at F and I. So F and I, how many carbons? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven carbons here. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. So this one also seems to have four carbons. Okay. It has four carbons. Then there's one. Oh, this one has one oxygen. This does not have. Oh yeah, I okay. Now we seem not to find the the structural isomers, okay? Uh, because in this question it was A to J, and I see F G H I J. So sorry, the J the J is not in this, okay? The H and the J. They are not here, and I think those two were the ones which are isomers of each other. Okay, that's not a problem. Write down the general formula of a homologous series to which compound C belong. Okay, the homologous series to which compound C belong. Okay, so where does compound C belong? Okay, sorry, we need to go back. Compound C, there you are, it's but two ion. Then uh, it belongs to which homologous series? We said it is an alkyne. So it means we are done with this question. Okay, very good. Uh, we are going to look at this question. Okay, so we are going to look at this question. So now, uh, they say consider the organic compounds represented by A to F. Okay, so A to F, you can see it's a keto, it's a ketone, it's a butane. That, I mean, it's a butane, it's an alkane. This one, alkene, it's an alcohol. Then ester is propanol, it's an aldehyde. So now we know so much about it. That's why you see me moving right along because I'm looking at this. Okay. This is the most important thing. There's a single bond between the carbon and carbon atoms all throughout. There's a double bond. There's an OH. And this is ester because it has an, uh, two parts of the name because of al is an aldehyde. So we know so much about this. So we say define homologous series. Okay. You have to know. Uh, the definition of homologous series, a series of compounds described by the same general formula, okay, and where the difference between the next compound is the CH2, okay. Now you have to look for an alkane quickly. Let's go and look for an alkane. Alkane, it is B. So we have a B because there's a single bond between the carbon and carbon atoms, okay. So that would be an alkane. Uh, sorry, we went forward. So alkane, it would be B, single bond between the carbon and carbon. The next question want us to look at the ester, okay? So we go, we go back rather, we go back, when you go back, ethyl ethanoate, we know it would be our ester. We spoke about it before. A letter of the hydrocarbon, we already know alkane are the hydrocarbons. So we can say this B would also work here because alkanes are hydrocarbon. The letter for alcohol, we look for something which has an OH. There's an OH, so it means it would be D. D is an alcohol, okay? The letter of an aldehyde, it should end with AL. We spoke about it before, that when something ends with AL, it's an aldehyde. Okay, so we go and look for it and we get it, it's F. Okay, it ends with L. So now we go and say, this would be your F. Okay, it ends with L. Okay, and yeah, that's what they wanted, the letters. Okay, so we know F is an aldehyde. Now they want the homologous series to which compound A belong. We look at it, uh, not this A, sorry. Now this one we know, it's a keto, okay? Just come here and say, I know this one, it's a keto because the carbonyl group is between the two carbons, okay? Now this is a ketone, the IUPAC name of C, you look at C, 
wait see they does so when you look at c this double bond is on carbon number one okay so it would be built because they are four so it will be built at one in so it would be built one in one two three four built one because it's on carbon number one and two we take the smallest number which is one there are no any substituents so it would be built one in Okay, and now they want the structural formula of E. Okay, they want the structural formula of E. We can go here and look at E. Ethyl ethanol 8. Okay, so we're gonna draw ethyl ethanol 8. It's an ester. Okay, so ethyl ethanol 8. So it would be an ester. So as that has to look something like this, okay? There should be an O, there should be this, but they said it's ethyl, so there's another C this side. Ethanol 8, there's another C this side, okay? There it's your ethyl ethanol 8. This part represents the, the carboxylic acid, okay? And this part, This part represents your alcohol. So it is ethyl ethanol 8. So that is the structure. Define a chain isomer. You should know what is a chain isomer by now. We said a compound with the same molecular formula but different chain type. Okay? So same molecular formula but different chain type. So they want the Write down the IUPAC name. They want the IUPAC name of the chain isomer of compound B. So they don't want the IUPAC name of B, but they want of its chain isomer. Okay. So let's go and check at B. There is a B. So it's straight. Okay. So if it's straight like this, if we want this functional uh, isomer, rather chain isomer. We're gonna have to have a shorter chain here. So maybe we have three carbons. So maybe we can draw it first. It will have three carbons and they are a methyl. So let's draw it. Okay. Let me take this here. Okay. So now we want that it would be uh, C, 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 and a metal here. Okay. It would be C, 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 and a metal here. Okay. C, 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 and a metal here. Okay. That is the structure, but the question did not want the structure. The question wanted a what? An IPEC name, but it is easy to get an IPEC name if you know a structure. There it is with my ugly H. So now you have to get the 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 name of this. So one, two, three, it would be prop. So, so because there's a single bond, we know it would be propane. Okay. It would be propane. Okay. It would be propane and there's a methyl. The methyl is between the two carbons. So it would be one, two, one, two. Does not matter how we go. So it would be one, two. So this will be two methyl between a letter and a number. You put a hyphen. So it will be two methyl propane. That would be the IPEC name of the chain isomer. So this is the different chain type. Okay, small print now. Okay, so that would be two methyl propane. You see now when you have done them several times, it becomes easier and you can even quickly be able to answer all the questions. Okay. So yeah, now they say A up to F. We know it's an alkyne. We know that 
It's a carboxylic acid, this alkyne, carboxylic acid, it's an ester. We see a ketone, we see an aldehyde. Because of this, we know it's an ester. We look for this. This tells us it's an acid. This part tells us it's a ketone. And this part tells us it's an alcohol. And this whole thing becomes your what? Your ester. Okay. Because of its name. Then this al becomes an aldehyde. So we are able to analyze the question and yeah, be in a position to answer. Okay. They want unsaturated. So we're looking for double because they said unsaturated. We are looking for a double. Okay. There is the answer. The answer would be A. That would be our answer, unsaturated. So there's a double or triple bond. Compound containing hydroxyl group. We know hydroxyl group is an OH and it found in an alcohol. So where is an alcohol? There we go. OH is a hydroxyl group. So our answer then becomes F. Okay. Write down the, this is an IPEC name. So please, uh, apologies for a typo. So it's IPEC name of the following, compound A. So we look at compound A. One, two, three, okay. We're gonna start here, one, two. So as the double bond as the smallest number. So it would be prop, okay. Prop one, I, it will end with I, prop one, I, okay? That will be prop one, I, okay? Okay, so the double bond has to be here between this carbon and this carbon, okay? Or propine, if you like, because that can only be in the first carbon, if there are only three carbons, okay? So compound F, so compound F, there is compound F, the IPEC name, we know it's an alcohol. So this will be a, a substituent. So three carbons, it would be prop, propan, one all. But there's a methyl here, so we need to also mention that there's a what? A methyl on carbon number two. So it will be two methyl, two methyl propan one all. So two methyl propan one all, okay? Because the methyl is here on carbon number two. And this is where we started, one, two, okay? The methyl is here. So it's prop because it has three carbons in the longest chain. So we are done with this one. They want the structure of B and E. Okay. Uh, so uh, they want the structure of B and E. So B and E, okay. Let me check B and E. So B, you can draw it right here, it's not a problem. So it would be pent, so it means it's five, one, two, three, four, five. It's an asset, so there is a carboxyl group here. Okay, there's a carboxyl group right there. Then what is left is just for us to put the hydrogens. Please remember to put all your hydrogens, as many as they are, make sure that you put all your hydrogens, okay? So there is our hydrogen, there is our hydrogen, there is our hydrogen, and there is our hydrogen, our hydrogen. That would be the structure of B. So there's a carboxyl group, so there you are, five carbons. Three methyl butanol, so but is four carbon. One, two, three, four. 
and al therefore there's a formly group right here okay there's a formula group right here or a carbonyl group it is on the first carbon so there we are but they said there's a methyl on carbon number three so one two three on this carbon there should also be a methyl okay there is a methyl on this carbon then you put your hydrogens make sure you put all your hydrogens Just write it uh, nicely. But so there you are. So four carbons for butte. Also, there's a family group. Then there's a metal on carbon number three, one, two, three. Then on carbon number three, there's a metal. And yeah, that will be three metal butanal. Okay. Uh, define a term functional isomer. By now, you should know a uh, functional isomer organic compounds with the same molecular formula but different side chain substituent or functional group. So, that would be your functional isomer. Okay, so now it would be a functional isomer. Write down the molecular formula of both compound. DNA. So DNA, where is DNA? Or oh, DNA. So there is a D, there is an E. So we can write the molecular formula easily. We count the carbons first. One, two, three, four, five. So it is C5. One, two, three, four, five. Hydrogens, three, five. 3 plus 2 is 5, 2 plus 3 is 5, so it means hydrogen, they are 10 in total. So H10. And of course, there's only one oxygen. Even for this one, it will have to have the same molecular formula. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it would be C5. Hydrogens, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So H10. Then there's one oxygen at all. There you go. So that would be your molecular formula. Okay. Very important that you check that they wanted the molecular formula, not the structural formula. Okay. So that is how you were supposed to do uh, that particular question. Okay. The last question, uh, it is about compound C. They say compound C is an organic product of reaction between carboxylic acid and alcohol. So we know it's an ester when carboxylic acid react with alcohol. So to which homologous series that C belong? Okay. The C belongs, uh, Okay. Okay. Uh, just a second. Yeah. So every time, every time we've got the carboxylic acid and we also have an alcohol, we know it's very important that we know that uh, carboxylic acid and alcohol, they are going to give us our ester. So the homologous series to which it would be long, it would be an ester. There is our thing. So we said it, it is ester. So you can just write it down somewhere and say, this belongs to esters. That is the family. How can you quickly establish whether compound C is indeed formed? If we are doing experiment in the lab, then we will get that by a smell. Esther has a characteristic smell, a pleasant smell. 
So by that scent, we would know that, yes, there was an extra. So it has a good smell, fragrance. The one that we get in our perfumes, okay? So it has a beautiful smell, the one in perfumes or the one similar to the one we get in flowers. Okay, so we'll get this by a pleasant smell. The labels smell nice, okay? Pleasant smell. Okay. Write down the IUPAC name of the alcohol used to prepare sin. So if they want us to give them alcohol used, there is an alcohol. This part represents the alcohol. So it's methyl, therefore the alcohol will be methanol. Okay? If it's methyl, the alcohol will be a methanol. Okay? Then the last question, the structure, write down the structural formula of C. They want us to now draw C, finally. They want us to draw C, okay. Uh, yeah, we can draw it here. Let me just go and check what is the name, methyl propanoid, okay. So it's methyl propanoid. So it would be, as that has to look like this, that's the first thing I, write, I draw first, the functional group, okay. Then they said it's what? Methyl propanoid, so there would be my methyl. So I completed this part. It's my methyl. There is another part for an for an acid. One, two, three, but it's a proper no it so it would be three colors. Okay. Then there would be three carbons. And yes, that would be the structure. And yeah. One exam tip that I want to, to give it to you would be to know that the organic chemistry is going to count about 29 marks, the part of nomenclature. So it's important that you know that the, all that we have been doing, it would help you to get about 29 marks. And it's easy to follow. You just have to make sure that you read the question correctly and you underline what is being asked of you. Okay. And yeah, as Albert Einstein once said, once you stop learning, you stop dying. So let's keep on learning so as we can live forever. And thank you very much. And I believe we have come to the end of the today's session. And thanks for being part of this program. Uh, we highly appreciate. Till we meet again. Thanks.